Father, cleanse these filthy hands. I long for brokenness for all my sin and shame. The tears you wept down number the sands. With every sin. Life. 
You have to ask yourself, which road are you on? Are you on the narrow road or are you on the wide road? You really have to ask yourself these questions because we don't know how much time we have left on this earth. Tonight could be our last night. How many friends of yours have passed away? How many family members have passed away? You know, one day, one night, it's going to be our turn. And we want to make sure that you know that you'll be going to heaven. And Jesus Christ says that you must believe. I don't know why you don't believe. Maybe somebody passed away in your life that you wanted to keep living. Maybe somebody mistreated you in your lifetime. But you got to forgive them. Because we have trespassed against God. And just like the Lord forgives us when we call out to Him, we're calling on you to ask the Lord for forgiveness. The Lord can forgive you. The Lord Jesus Christ says that you must be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. He doesn't say you have to be a good person. He doesn't say you have to be a Catholic. He doesn't say you have to be a Baptist. The question is, are you born again? Don't you see what's happening in the world? All the wars and the rumors of wars. The kingdom going against kingdom. People hating each other. It's just like the Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew 24, that we're in the last days. Are you ready for the return of Jesus Christ? If you were to die tonight, are you going to go to heaven? If you were to die tonight, would you be going to hell? You got to ask yourself these questions. You got to make sure where you're going. You might be stressed about your job. You want a new job. You might be stressed out about your spouse. You want a new spouse. But your focus is on the wrong thing. Do you remember Peter? When the Lord Jesus Christ called Peter to walk on water. And Peter started looking around and then he started drowning. What's your focus on? Is it in the storm in your life? That's why you're drowning. Because you're focused on the storm. You got to focus on Jesus Christ. You don't have to go to hell. Hell is not a fun place. The Lord Jesus Christ says that it's a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's not a party. The Lord Jesus Christ said that hell was made for Lucifer and his angels. It's not going to be fun and games. Hell is going to be cast into the lake of fire. I don't know when's the last time that you heard that, but we're out here to tell you that Jesus Christ can liberate you, but you have to turn away from your sins. Have you opened up 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10, where it says, drunkards, liars, idolaters won't enter, won't inherit the kingdom of God? Give glory to God that you're still able to walk, man. Thank God that we're able to breathe. Thank God that we're able to still hear and see. What are we listening to? Are we listening to the Word of God? What are you filling your soul with? The Lord Jesus Christ is the bread of life and He offers living water. When was the last time that you took a piece? of the bread of life. What are you filling your soul with? Just like you eat physically, what are you eating spiritually? Just like you take a shower physically, how are you getting cleansed spiritually? The only thing that can cleanse you is the blood of Jesus Christ. He's the one who died on the cross for your sins. It wasn't Mary. Yes, sir. 
praise God. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. There's a reason why we come out here today because we believe in the one that's sitting in the throne, the eternal one, the one that is he, the, the Alpha and the Omega, the one that was from the beginning and, and the one that's going to be at the end. And see, we are mortal. We are nothing but dust. And to the dust we will go back to. But Jesus, the eternal one, is calling out to humanity. There's a reason why we come out here today to glorify the one that lives, the one that was dead, but now and he has risen and now he has, is living forever. The, the only one that holds immortality in his hand, the author, the maker, the maker of all of this, of our own very lives that we cherish. But I'm here to tell you today that one that stepped into creation and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and there is no other way to the Father, there is no other way to heaven, but through Jesus Christ, through the eternal one. And I'm here to tell you today that Jesus said that he did not come to condemn the world, but to bring salvation to his creation. But what I'm seeing is that we have deaf ears. We don't, we don't want to hear what God and what God has been telling us since the beginning. He's calling that out to humanity. He's knocking at, at the door of your heart, calling to you, wanting to have a personal relationship. But we are glorifying the things of this world. We, we are glorifying the things of this world. We glorify a man. Talents, but one day they will have to go back where me and you came from, and that's dirt. The Bible says that we are dirt and we will go back to dirt. But where are where is our soul going to? Where is our soul going to? And the Bible teaches that there is heaven and there is hell. But Jesus is calling out to you and to me in love and calling to humanity. Eternal life, not in you. 
music, not in TV shows, not in the Kardashians, not in Hulu or movies, but the word of God is the word that sustains this creation. But we are, we are, we are, we are going in and we are turning our backs from the word of God. We have, that we have put away the word of God. And we let go, we let, we let these singers influence us. And we close our ears to God. We close our ears to the voice of God. We close our ears to what God wants us for our lives. But I'm here to tell you today that God keeps calling out to humanity. God keeps knocking at the door of humanity. Even though you reject him, even though you push him away, even though you don't even accept a, a track that has Bible verses on it. But when everything is going bad, you cry out to God. You run to God. But see, God doesn't want you to run to him when only when you, it's, everything is going bad. He wants you to run to him when everything is going good. He wants you, he wants you to love him, not for what he can give you, but for what he has done on the cross. The Bible says that Jesus stood on that cross and he said, Father, forgive them for they not know what they do. Yeah, you keep walking away. Yeah, you keep pushing God away. Yeah, God, you keep pushing. You keep rejecting God. But God in his faithfulness, God in his love, he cries out to you. He's calling out to you because his patience, it brings repentance to humanity. And that's why God is being patient with us. That's why God gives us breath every day that we wake up because he is being patient with us. We have cursed God. We have pushed away God. We curse him, but God still sends out his blessing to us. God still sends his blessing to heaven. See, we, we love these bands called ACDC. We love these, we love these uh, singers called Queen. But I'm here to tell you today that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, every man and every woman, will bow and confess that Jesus is Lord. And every knee will bow to him. And every tongue will confess to him that he is Lord. And, the, and Jesus said it himself that those who are ashamed to proclaim my name here on earth, he will be ashamed to acknowledge you in heaven in front of his Father and his angels. Why don't you acknowledge God? Well, why do you acknowledge these people that are temporary? Yeah, you need faith to see what God is doing in your life. You need faith to see what God has given you in your life. So we make this comment. We're here today to tell you that Jesus keeps knocking at the door of your heart, wanting to come in, wanting to step in, to show you life, to show you what he has for you, to show you that his ways are better. But we close our ears to his calling, and we open our ears to people that have these gifts, not knowing that that gift came from the giver and his name is Jesus. God is calling us to repentance. The Bible says that in the last days you will see rumors of wars. You will see famines and pestilence. And as you see people, we all live in the last days. As you see what's going on and worldwide, it's time to repent. You asking God for a sign? Well, these are the signs that God is calling you. That God loves you. That God is coming, that Jesus is coming back. And only those who are attentive, those who are listening, those 
who are paying attention, those who have their ears open, will hear the trumpets sound. You gotta close your ears to this world. You gotta close your ears to what the enemy has infiltrated in this world. You can't be living distracted in this life. God is calling you to focus on the word. We got to run back to the word of God. We got to surrender to the word of God. We got to let the word of God be the light and the lamp of our ways, of our path. God is calling you to repentance because one day we will stand before our creator. And there's no, there's, there ain't gonna be no excuse there. there. Ain't gonna be no rejection there. God is showing His love. God is showing His patience. Many people are asking why is this going on in the world? Well, let me tell you that Jesus already spoke about this way before we were born. And Jesus said, when you see these signs. Know that your redemption is near. Know that your time is coming. Know that your relation is coming. And if you think this is, that if you think this is a bad thing, the Bible says that worse things will come. And we gotta be ready. We gotta prepare. We gotta hide ourselves under the shadow of the Most High. These, the, every sign that we see, everything that we're seeing with our eyes, the Bible said that this is just birth pains. Yes, sir. And if this is just birth pains, then I don't want to see what's going to come to light. If the Bible says that this is just birth pains, everything oh, that's going on in the world, then I don't want to see what's coming next. See, you have all these questions because you don't read the Bible. That's why you have all these questions. That's why the world has all these questions. Where is God? Why is this happening? See, God doesn't know us. See, God is an evil God. Now, Jesus already prophesied this. Jesus spoke about this. Jesus taught about this. But what are you doing? What are we doing? How are we preparing ourselves? Yeah, we got to run back to the word of God. Because every question that we have, he has the answer to. Amen. So God is calling us to repentance, people. God is calling us to come back to him. God is calling us to surrender to him. Stop glorifying the things of the world. Stop glorifying man. The Bible says that we are vapor. Yes, sir. The Bible says that we are here today and tomorrow we're gone. The Bible teaches that we can, why are we storing up treasures here on earth where they perish? Why won't you make treasures in heaven Amen. where nothing can creep in and steal what you have, what you have acquired? Amen. Yeah, God calls, out, God calls out to us in love. God calls out to us in mercy. So I leave you with this, Dallas, Texas. It's time to run back to the word of God. It's time to run back to God. It's time to run back to Jesus. The only way that can save us, the salvation and the author of life. Amen. Brother Marshall. Marshall. You ready, brother? Hey, brother. Praise the Lord. Hey, uh, Josh. Give him the condenser. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this night. Thank you, Lord, for these people. Father, I just pray right now for these guys sitting over there, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I pray that you would bless them in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. God bless you guys. Jesus loves you. Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, you must be born again. 
except your man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What's the legacy you're going to leave behind? One day we're all going to die. We're going to stand before our creator. And God bless you guys. God bless you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. One day we're all going to stand before our, our creator. And what's the legacy we're going to leave behind? How are people going to remember us? I've thought about this often for myself. How are people going to remember me? What's the legacy I'm, I'm leaving behind? One day I'm going to die. We're all going to die. We're going to stand before God. And I'm going to have my whole life to look back. The Bible says our life is but a vapor. The Bible says our life is very quick. It's over quickly. And people are going to remember us, maybe for two generations. And then even my family is going to forgive me after two generations, maybe three. I'm going to be forgotten. I'm just a man. What's the legacy I'm leaving behind? I have a very short lifespan on this earth. And then I'm, I'm going to, into eternity. And I ask myself this question. What's the legacy? I'm going to die one day. We're all going to perish. Doesn't anyone else think about this? It's so serious. Our lives are, are so short. One day I'm going to die and I'm going to stand before God. And he's going to say to me, well done, good and faithful servant. The only reason he's going to say that to me is because I put my trust in Jesus. We've all sinned. The Bible says we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says that men will profess their own goodness. And I did this before. I used to profess that I was a pretty good person. A, a, a quick examination of God's law. I've lied. I've stolen. I've looked with lust. Jesus said, if you look at a woman to lust for her, you've committed adultery already in your heart. I've taken God's name in vain. If I judge myself by the commandments, I'm a lying thief, a blasphemer, and an adulterer at heart. If I judge myself by the commandments, I'm a lying thief, a blasphemer, and an adulterer at heart. If we all judge ourselves by the commandments, this is how we're going to come up on Judgment Day. When we stand before God, we've all lied, we've all stolen, we've all taken God's name in vain, and we've all looked with lust. Some of us have even had sex outside of marriage, looked at pornography. So what do we do when we stand before God, guilty, before a perfect and holy and righteous God, a God who's going to punish sin. God is, takes sin so seriously. I, I have a daughter. If my daughter ran out in the street, I would not gently tell her to stop. I would aggressively tell her, sweetie, stop, don't do that. I'm telling her because I love her, because I love my daughter so much that I want to save her. God loves you. Love you, brother. God bless you, man. God loves you enough to tell you, to warn you, don't live this life. Stop. Don't run out on the street. Don't touch the hot stove. It's because of God's love. You see, the Bible says that the reason that God came down, the reason that Jesus came down is because we're so sinful and we're so evil in our hearts. We've broken the commandments that Jesus had to come down and he had to pay the price. When Jesus died on the cross, it fulfilled God's mercy because see, God loves everybody here. He loves all of you right now. Jesus loves every single one of you. He loves you. Jesus died for you because he loves you so that his mercy could be fulfilled. But God is also perfectly just and he cannot tolerate sin. Every sin is going to be paid for. None of us are going to get away with anything. Everything I've ever done, I'm going to have to answer for. And that's where the righteousness of God comes in. God is a righteous, perfect, just judge. And every sin will be punished. So either I pay the sin myself, and I take the sin on myself, and then I go to hell forever. Or I can say, Jesus, you take my sins. You died for me on the cross. No work. Nothing I can do. There's no righteousness that I've done. But I put my trust in the one who did it for me. Now, God looks at me and he sees me through the blood of Jesus Christ. He doesn't look at me as a sinner anymore. He looks at me through his son's blood, through what his son did for me. Now I'm righteous, not because of my work. It's not of works, lest any man boast. I've not done any work. I've believed and put my trust in the Messiah, in Jesus. 
If you're jumping off a plane and you put the parachute on, you're putting your trust in the parachute that the parachute is going to save you. That's how you put your trust in Jesus. You say, Jesus, I can't pay for my sin. If it were up to me, I'm a lying thief, a blasphemer, and an adulterer at heart. That's me, apart from the blood of cross. I put the parachute on. Now, I have safety. I have assurance. I can be absolutely 100% sure of my eternal security, not because of what I've done, but because of the finished work. Because when Jesus died on the cross, remember he said, it is finished. Every single lie I've ever told, nailed to the cross. Everything I've ever stolen, nailed to the cross. Every time I've looked with lust, it was, it was nailed to the cross. Jesus paid for my sins. This is what we have to get a hold of. When we talk about being born again, we're talking about becoming a new creation. First Corinthians says we become a new creation in Christ. We can become brand new. That's how much God loves every single one of you. And he sent crazy street preachers like us because he loves you that much. And I'm out here looking crazy because I love Jesus that much. And I love you guys, and I want you guys to have a chance to hear the gospel. Gospel means good news. The good news is I can't do anything to save myself, but I can put my trust in the one who did it all for me. Jesus died, and he paid for my sins. And then when I pray that prayer, and if you want to pray that prayer tonight, if you want to come and pray with us, any of you, we'll pray with you right now. We love you. If you pray that prayer, from that moment on, you're saved. You're born again. You're a new person. You're a new creation in Christ. Because Jesus did the work. There's no work. There's nothing I can do. Jesus did it for me. Now I can say, Lord, thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. That's why God is so righteous and he's also so merciful. The righteousness was fulfilled on the cross. God punished all his sin, but he didn't put it. He put it on himself. He put it on his son. Jesus took that payment so you don't have to take it. Every lie I've ever told. Every time I've ever looked, every, every sin I've ever committed, Jesus took on that sin so that I, because I could not bear it. The Bible says if you've broken one, you've broken the whole of the commandments. So when I put my trust in Jesus and I, I receive his mercy, now the righteousness, the perfect justice of God is fulfilled and his perfect love and his mercy is fulfilled. He's so merciful, that's why Jesus came and did what he did. What he did. You see, this is what the Bible says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. God bless you. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. God bless you guys. But he that doeth truth, Cometh to the light. Come to the light. Jesus is calling you out right now. The time is short. Hearken unto my voice. The time is short. Jesus has come. Come to the light. For everyone that doeth evil hateth light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. It's very shameful sometimes to admit that you've lied and stolen. But there's freedom in you. I can take off my sin. Jesus took it for me. I don't have to bear the weight of my guilt, my condemnation. Jesus took it for me. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Jesus paid the price. I was guilty. I lied. I stole him. I blasphemed. And I've looked with lust. Jesus loves you guys. He paid the price. All you have to do, love you, brother. May God bless you, man. God bless you. Yes, you did. You're guilty before God. So the, the problem is, is that 
just what the Bible says. We don't want to admit that we're sinners. We don't want to admit that how evil we really are. We, we think we're pretty good, but we're not really good. We've all lied. If we judge ourselves by the commandments, it's so easy to see how guilty we are before a perfect, holy, and righteous God. God bless you. Anyone who's ever lied, anyone who's ever stolen, taken God's name in vain, or looked at a woman with lust. We've all done those things. Don't lie to yourself. Before the time is too late. You see, Jesus talked about a story of a rich man who had everything he needed. But he neglected to trust in, he neglected to put his trust in God. He neglected to have faith because what saves us is faith. Even in the Old Testament, Abraham was saved by faith. And Jesus describes very vividly what happens when he dies. And he wakes up in Hades. And I love you guys enough to tell you, you don't want to go there. Hearken to my voice. Listen, this is so serious. This is eternity we're talking about. Would you ever go take a trip to Mexico? But you didn't plan it out beforehand? Would you ever take a trip to Guatemala, but you didn't take months to plan it out? But yet, we're going to go to eternity, and I haven't even thought about it? Come on, i got to think about it for a little bit, right? I'm going to go to eternity forever. Shouldn't I consider it? I'm, we're all going to die. Shouldn't I at least consider for a moment, where am I going to go? Am I going to go to heaven or hell? That's the question we all have to ask ourselves. Am I going to be guilty or innocent before the Creator? Am I going to go to heaven or hell? Am I, am I prepared to step into eternity? Because none of us know when we're going to die. Before I was even born, my uncle and my grandfather passed away in a car accident very tragically. And suddenly, they were planning their vacations. They were planning where they were going to go next summer. They died suddenly. And it happened without their planning. Folks, what I'm saying is so serious. 150,000 people die every day. I'm saying this to put a little bit of the fear of God in you because fear can be a good thing. If you're standing on the edge of a cliff, fear is what tells you to step back and say, hold on, I don't want to do this. Fear can be a good thing. And I'm telling you this because I love you all enough to tell you the truth. Jesus said this in John 14. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. No one comes to the Father except through the perfect sacrifice. When you have the guilt of your sins and you're carrying that burden, you're like a man that's carrying a big rucksack on his back or a woman, and you have this heavy burden on you. But what Jesus is doing is he's going to take it away from you. And then you can say, I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. It's a wonderful gift. It's, it's salvation and it's freedom. God bless you, man. Time is short, brother. Time is short. That's right, brother. Time is, time is short. Put your trust in Jesus. The time is short. Jesus is coming back soon, I believe. And we need to all be prepared for his coming. Gabriel's looking up like he's coming back right now. Jesus is coming back right now. <laughs> God bless you guys. I love you all so much. Come and pray with me. I'll talk to you. I'll answer any of your questions. I'll pray with you. I love you all. I want you to receive the truth. I want you to receive the gospel. Jesus loves you and he died for you. And he's inviting you into his kingdom right now. All you got to do is pray that God bless you. All you got to do is pray that prayer. Earnest heart. Just say, Lord, save me. Jesus, save me. It doesn't take much. Jesus is not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. God bless you guys. Jesus Christ is king. He's coming back. Put your trust in him. Praise God. God bless you all. May you have a safe trip home. And while on your way, please give thought to God. The Bible says, seek the Lord 
while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. That's a sobering message because as my brother was saying, there will come a point when we're no longer able to receive him. Could be because we've given ourselves away to the world. It could be because our time has run out. That's why it's important to seize the moment, seize the day that the Lord has provided and to think on his word and to think on Christ's sacrifice and what that means to you. What that means to you in your life in this moment in time, for the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. It says, for those who have an ear, let them hear. And if you find your heart being convicted, if you find your ear bending into the word, I challenge you to lean into it. I challenge you to think about it. I challenge you to dust off that Bible in your house that your grandma gave you when you were a child. I challenge you to read the Word. I challenge you to think on God. I challenge you to praise His name in public if you are a Christian, so there will be no doubt that Jesus is the Lord and Savior of your life, and that you do not take for granted His sacrifice on the cross, for you know that it can save, you know it can lift you up, you know it can heal you, it can take you out of the dark places. And take you to eternity with Him. The Apostle Paul in his journey when he was preaching the message throughout the, the book of Acts, it would always work the same way. He would first go to the synagogues preaching to his people, preaching to his kinsmen, preaching the gospel message that Jesus Christ was Messiah, the man that they were waiting for, hoping for, dreaming about, had arrived. It was time for them to seize that opportunity. And he would raise it with them hour after hour in the synagogues in the hopes that they would receive it. It would always be the same. Some would and others would not. Some would change their ways, other would continue on protesting. It would happen again and again, each and every place, all throughout Asia Minor, on into Macedonia, then to Athens and Corinth and Ephesus, all the same. And there were moments where the Jewish crowd would get the best Apostle Paul, where he would get upset at him. I remember a verse, I believe, in Corinth, where he had had enough arguing with them and them fighting against him over whether Christ was the Messiah. And he said, Let the blood be on your heads. Henceforth, I will go to the Gentiles. What an interesting phrase to say, Let the blood be on your heads, that you must live with your choice. You must live with your decision to reject Christ. You must have to take account of the fact that you heard the words. I'll give you some. I can, I'll help you in a minute. We gotta finish. That you had the opportunity to receive the bread of life. You had the opportunity to take in His word, but you were gonna be troubled. You proved to be too difficult. You were this close. To eternal life, you are this close to receiving forgiveness of sins. You are this close to receiving the mercy and grace of God, and you rejected it. And yet, the choices by those stubborn Jewish folks in the synagogues who rejected the message was hope for the world, hope for the Gentiles, hope for the Greeks, hope for all those people who were living in darkness without the Torah without God's Word, and now, because of the choices of those rebellious Jews, the message went forth. It went forth to them. It gave them the opportunity to receive the spread of life. It gave them the opportunity to be healed like the Canaanite woman. It gave them the opportunity to be set free from the bondage in their lives. Harkening back to Jesus' first sermon, 
where he planned to set the captives free, where he planned to heal the brokenhearted, to restore black sight to the blind, and so many people. We're not just talking here about being blind as cannot see, we're talking about here as being spiritually blind. Being so focused on the world that you forget there is a spiritual world beyond it. You forget that there's something beyond this plane. I challenge you now, tonight, when you have a moment and you're not as busy rushing into the concert, that perhaps you will think of your Savior. You will think of Christ. You will think of what happened on that cross and what that truly means. There's an urgency in the message of my words and my brother's words because there will be a day when you can no longer make this choice. There will be a time when it runs out. You will stand before God on the day of judgment and you will be judged. You will have to make an account. You will have to stand before him and have your whole life laid bare. And if you choose to go your own way, if you choose to reject the Messiah, you will be alone. And you will be found guilty. You will be found lacking. Just as King Belshazzar was. When the time had ran out for him, when the writing was on the wall. And yet, if you choose Christ, sisters as you travel home think about Christ think about the cross think about what happened on that day think about what that means if Christ truly was resurrected think about what that means that there was someone who died on a cross for you there was a God that died on a cross for you so that you can have the opportunity to live, so that you can be lifted up from the mire, you can be lifted up from the bondage, you can be lifted up from the baggage of this world and walk in freedom. Walk in the freedom that the Lord provides, walk in the hope that He offers us and His Son.
The Bible says the victory is the Lord's.